G'day folks, it's Rob here and today I'm chuffed to be able to bring you a clip on growing some papaya. I've got six pointers that I've picked up recently that I'd like to share with you all that'll hopefully have all of us growing a ton of papaya before we know it. Now papaya is also known as pawpaw here in Australia but as there's a native tree in North America that goes by the same name I'll be calling it papaya through this clip. So tip number one has to be position. It's the most important thing when it comes to papaya. Now they are a tropical plant, so do keep in mind that they need to be grown in frost-free areas. And most of us don't live in the tropical climate, so we need to get them out in the sun where they're going to receive a lot of heat. If you're in more cooler temperate areas, definitely plant them in full sun and the plants are gonna love you for it. If you can position them near some sort of a heat sink, something like a brick wall, a retaining wall, maybe a fence or even a water tank all the better um, the sun's going to come in the heat energy will be stored during the day and released at night so the plants will benefit from that situation so now we know where they like to grow we've got to think about what they're going to be sending their roots down into so soil is tip number two Papaya really do like a free draining soil like most plants out there. They don't like a lot of water sitting around the roots. They're very susceptible to root rot as we found out recently when we lost one grown in a container that had very wet soil all the time. Now, to try and um, aid the uh, draining capabilities of your soil, what you can do is add in organic matter. Um, it will have a threefold effect. It will feed the soil biology, which will release nutrients for the plants. It will also loosen up the soil, so water will pass through it. But at the same time, that organic matter will soak up water, retaining it there for once the soil dries out and it will be available for the plants and the microbes to feed on. So definitely it does pay to have a nice, rich, free draining blend for your papaya tree. Now that sort of leads us on to tip number three, watering. Now papayas are a fairly thirsty plant, but as I said before, they don't like a lot of water sitting around their roots. So it is a bit of a fine balancing act. You can install drippers or um, soaker hoses, things like that to keep them nice and hydrated, just making sure that the ground doesn't become saturated. With our plants here, this is the one up near the house. It's in a wicking barrel. So what that basically is, is a self-watering container. There's a reservoir down the base and that water wicks up through the soil, keeping the roots relatively dry, but the plant always has water available to it. And the um, plant in the container down the back, exactly the same thing. It's a large wicking bed. So there are ways to keep them well hydrated, especially if you want to grow them in a container situation like us. So papaya are susceptible to a couple of different fungal diseases. So I thought I'd show you how to treat them and a few preventative steps you can take as tip number four. So this papaya here is a volunteer and we weren't intending to keep it, we were going to pull it out. But as it started to set fruit, we've decided to give it a reprieve and it's going to stay in the patch. But as I wasn't paying much attention to it, um, we did end up with a bit of a black spot outbreak. And as you can tell, these leaves or the lower ones don't look too happy. So while the top of the tree looks nice and healthy and I see no signs of the black spot, I do need to look after these lower sections, which is what I'll give you a bit of a look at now. So any diseased leaves like this one here will be chopped off and tossed into a bag that will go into the rubbish bin out the front for collection. The reason I'm doing that is because these diseased branches, if I compost them, could release spores into the compost then when I spread that compost around the yard, I could end up with a larger outbreak. So all these guys need to come off now. So now the worst affected leaves have been removed from the tree. What we can do is spray it with a fungicide. What I've got here is a mix made from wettable sulfur, which is basically a colloidal sulfur. Mixes very well and suspends in the water. You spray that onto the plant itself and that will kill any spores that are remaining. It is recommended that you don't apply wettable sulfur on days where the temperature is going to hit over 30 degrees Celsius. Apply it after the temperature drops in the afternoon. Black spot actually thrives in cooler temperatures, so it's recommended to do a preventative spray once a month from autumn all the way through to mid-spring, just to make sure you can keep it under control. You might see one or two spots here or there, but they won't last long if you keep up the spraying regime. So there are other fungicides you can use on black spot and other fungal issues with papaya. There's uh, copper-based ones. I don't want to use the copper-based ones here because copper can build up to toxic levels in the soil if applied over and over again. 
and because we're growing in containers it's a perfect environment for it to accumulate so we've pretty much all decided not to use the copper by the way the wettable sulfur is considered as an organic um, input or an allowable input on organic farms um, it's just basically sulfur the element that you find in the soil anyway now there's a couple of elements you can feed papayas through the cooler months that will help boost their immune system and fight off fungal outbreaks like this potassium and magnesium so you can dose up once a month using uh, potash and epsom salts epsom salts will add the magnesium and that will um, just give the plant a little bit extra other than its regular feed just to help um, keep it in peak condition to fight off these outbreaks and that leads us on nicely to tip number five which is fertilizing the plant uh, i actually need to feed this plant up today so we'll move the camera around and i'll show you how i'm going to do it now just quickly this bed here is a polyculture bed as you can see we have the papaya over in the corner we have a red celery here and we have some egyptian walking onions down the front with a load of egyptian spinach volunteers and a row of turmeric in the centre here. Uh, it's just dormant at the moment, but it should start to shoot as soon as things warm up a bit. So papayas are fairly heavy feeders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed up this bed with a commercial blend of compost. Um, you could use your own if you have some available. I just don't have any on hand at the moment. So I'll just empty this in the middle and then I'll spread it around. So this compost I'm adding is based on blood and bone, cow sheep and poultry manure also got some worm castings kelp and some other goodies in there so it is fairly rich and will feed up the whole bed so i'm adding in some slow release organic pellet fertilizer because there's more plants than just the papaya in this bed and also a sprinkling of rock dust that's because the plants can't mine the elements from down in the soil being in a container bed I'm also adding in some lucin or alfalfa hay on top as a mulch. That'll not only stop evaporation from the surface, but the compost worms and microbes will feed on it, making the nutrients in it available for the plants in the bed. Just quickly, once a month from now on, I will be moving the mulch aside and adding in a decent handful of this slow release chicken based organic fertilizer. Uh, that'll just help add some nitrogen, some potassium, some phosphorus and um, calcium into the beds for the papayas just because they are a heavy producing plant. Um, I think I might have to um, supplement with a bit of magnesium from time to time and a bit of extra potassium. Uh, these guys don't have a lot of magnesium in them so out will come the Epsom salts. So now we've given this young lady some TLC and we've fed up the bed. We're on to tip number six which is when do you harvest the fruit? Now with the papaya you can eat it a few different ways. You can eat it green which if that's the case you just pick it when it gets to a nice large enough size which is how we prefer them actually and then what we do is julienne them up with some green mango from the tree behind us here and have them in a bit of a salad you can harvest the papaya as soon as you see a blush of color coming to the green fruit and let it ripen up on the kitchen bench inside or if you live in a pest free area, you can just let the fruit ripen on the tree. If we do let them ripen on the tree though, we have a couple of locals that like to help themselves as well. Uh, we have this little one here that was left on too long and some flying foxes decided to um, devour it in one sitting. The other local natives that like to have a bit of a feast on them are the possums, both the ringtail and the brush tail. So if you let them ripen up on the tree, yeah, you're quite likely gonna find a few missing here or there to the possums. And I've also heard of people in more built up areas that will lose the ripe ones, unfortunately, to rats. Another case where you might wanna harvest your fruit is if you do end up with black spot through the cooler months and you notice some black spots on the papaya fruit itself. What you can do there is nip off those green immature fruits you can take them inside and give them a bath in 40 plus degree Celsius water for around about 20 minutes and that will kill off any of the spores on the outside of the fruit. You can then take it out and let it ripen up on the bench and you should be as good as gold. So we were talking about fruit so I thought I'd give you a bit of an added bonus and just discuss the sex of papaya trees. Now don't click off, uh, this is actually fairly interesting. Now with papaya trees a lot of the varieties will have either a male tree and a female tree. So that means you need to get the pollen from the male over to the female to fertilize the fruit to give you something to harvest. Now this tree here and the other one we have up near the back stairs are both hermaphrodites. Uh, they're marketed as bisexual. Now the reason they are hermaphrodites is they have a what's known as a perfect flower. They have a female fruit in the center and another part of the flower that provides the pollen from the male part which is the stamen. At the top of that there will be pollen and that will be transferred from there up to the stigma on the top of the female part of the flower 
and it will be fertilized and there you go you've got yourself a nice potentially large fruit if the fruit bats don't get it now once you do end up with your fertilized fruit you can plant out the seeds now one thing to be aware of is just because you get the seeds from a hermaphrodite plant doesn't mean you will end up with a papaya that is going to be able to self-fertilize its own fruit it may revert back to a male or a female it's a bit of potluck so if you do want a guaranteed hermaphroditic plant or bisexual plant it does pay for you to buy one from a nursery so i do hope you've enjoyed these tips and pointers on how you can grow a healthy happy papaya that'll provide you with tons of fruit for years on end if you have enjoyed this clip and you think it'd help out family and friends please share it along on different forms of social media it'll help me out and hit that subscribe button while you're at it as always i need to send out a quick g'day and thank you very much to all the marvelous folks who are supporting us over on patreon you can actually check out our super contributors websites and facebook pages down in the description below there's a guitar maker and a couple of aquaponics ones there along with some backyard farmers like myself i do hope you're all well and happy and that your own gardens and papayas are booming and i'll catch you all next clip cheers all have a tough one You've been very patient, haven't you, Lizzie? She's been laying down here waiting for me to um, finish the clip so we can go throw the ball. Do you want to go throw the ball? Come on, let's go.